Hey guys, it's Courtney, and I am creating a black and white card using the Cosmo stamp set by Honeybee Stamps. And I am starting off with a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm stamping with Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. And I started just with this larger flower right there in the center of my panel. And I'm using Eclipse masking paper just to mask out the flower itself. The stem and the leaves were pretty intricate, so I just figured I'd be a little careful when I stamped my other images. I stamped both of the other flowers on either side of that middle one, and then there are a couple of leaf stamps in the set, and I just took one of those and stamped a few on the bottom, kind of hanging off the, the bottom of the card just to fill in some of those white areas. And then we'll move on to our Copic coloring. Now I'm going to start with my darkest color, which is actually the black. And I'm just laying out my shadows. I'm doing a few flicks right from the center of the flower. And if the leaves, if there are the petals rather, if the petals touch, I'm trying to concentrate on the flicks being right in the center of the petal. So I don't want my flicks from one petal touching my flicks of the petal next to it. I'm going to preserve just a little bit of a highlight there so that my petals don't all mush together. I'm also going to create a few flicks on the outside of the petal by making our highlight right in the center of each petal. It will make it look like they're kind of bowed out a little bit. So once I had my 100 marker down which is jet black i'll move on to my c7 and start extending those flicks now the c7 is pretty dark so i'm still preserving that highlight on either side of the petal where they touch i'll go in with my c5 for that area so that there will be some difference between the two petals i'll also extend those flicks from the outer part of the petals as well. Keep in mind that you can always add more color later. So start off with very small flicks. If you need to add a little bit more shadows later, you can always go back and do that, but you can't take it away once it's down. Once my C7 was out on there, I went on to my C5 and again, just basically did the same thing. This time I will go all the way to the edge of the petals and also extend that line where the petals touch, where there would be a shadow. And I am leaving a really generous highlight here. And instead of going in with my C3, which would be the next color in line, I skipped right to my C1 just because I wanted this highlight to be really noticeable and really bright. So because this is such a lighter color than what I was using. I'm going over it very quickly. I'm laying down my color and moving on to the next petal. I don't want to take away the darkest colors that I laid out. I'll show you one more flower here. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit and then I'll color the other one off camera, but I'm basically doing the same exact thing, starting with my 100 marker. Now, some of these petals are kind of off the page a little bit. So I'm just kind of imagining that they're still there so that I can still place some flicks. They would just be a lot shorter because some of them would be off the page. Now, if you're just starting off with alcohol markers or Copic markers and you're not sure whether you should purchase them, I would recommend getting the gray markers, whether it be the cool grays or the warm grays or both. You can start with black and white images just to kind of get the feel of them and they look fantastic especially if you choose like a flower image and it gives you the feel of the marker see how they blend see if it's worth the investment for you you're going to need the grays anyway whether you have all of the copics or just the grays you're going to use the grays a lot you can always use the grays for shadowing regardless of what color you use over top of it. So again here I'm going in with my lightest color very quickly 
trying not to pick up too much of that darkest color. And like I said, I did color that third flower off camera. And we'll move on to the centers of the flowers. I wanted to differentiate this, these, this part of the flower and the stems and the leaves from the rest of the flower. So I'm using my warm grays here, starting with my darkest color, laying out my darkest area where the center of the flower would be deepest into the flower. So the part that would be raised up, you wanna keep that the lightest. For the stems, I'm just concentrating the darkest areas being right underneath the flower and then working my way down to my lightest. For the leaves, I had no idea how to color these. So there is a small line within the illustration of the leaf. So I'm going in with my W7 and just basically going over that line and extending that out a little bit. Then I'll go in with my W5 and extend that a little further. And then the little parts of the leaf that are kind of sticking out, they kind of look like stems a little bit. I'm starting to, to go into those a little bit, just in some areas, just to give it some contrast within the leaf. And then I'll go in with my W3 and go over the entire leaf. Now, these are really tiny, so you wanna make sure that you're using just the tip of your marker. There are some areas that I did kind of go out of the lines a little bit, but this is a light enough color where I can go in with my colorless blender and just fill in those areas once I'm done coloring. And like I said before, if you're not happy with the shadows that you put down or where the darkest color is, you can always go back and add more dark. Just remember that you cannot take it away, not very easily anyway. So here's where I go in with my zero marker here and just cleaned up some of those areas. And the card was looking pretty plain. I loved the colors, I loved the contrast that I was getting, but I needed a little bit something instead of just a stark white background. So I've decided to take Hickory Smoke Distress Ink and I'm using my ink blending tool here and I'm dabbing off a majority of it and then going onto the card panel from the bottom up with a very, very light hand. I'm not worried about going over my flowers because I'm using such a light hand that the, the ink color is lighter than the color that I put down on my flowers and stems. So I did go over this several times with, like I said, a very light hand and kind of just worked my way up to the white and just let, basically until there was no more ink on my tool. And then I did go ahead and trim down this panel just a little bit. I'll be using a black A2 size card base, so I did want a little bit of a border. Next for my sentiment, I'm be, I'll be using the Thankful dies from Honeybee Stamps as well as the Grateful stamp set. I've used this in a couple of cards um, a few days ago. I love this die set and I love this stamp set, so you'll probably be seeing a lot of it. I cut out the shadow piece in black cardstock and the word die out of white. And I'm just using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to go ahead and adhere that word onto the frame. For the rest of the sentiment, I use the For You in the Grateful Stamp Set. And I'm using that scrap piece of black cardstock. And I'll be white heat embossing this with Hero Arts white embossing powder. Make sure that you do treat your cardstock with an anti-static tool, especially if you're using black or a very dark cardstock and white embossing powder. Any stray embossing powder is really going to show on darker cardstock. So I'm just using my Versamark pad here and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down. Once that is heat set, I use one of the angular banner dies also by Honeybee Stamps. You can tell I got their new release and I am having fun playing with it. But I used one of those dies to go ahead and cut a strip from that for you. And usually when I 
run something through my die cutting machine. I, I use a Gemini, so that's why I die cut off camera. It's the full size Gemini. I use either washi tape or post-it note tape so that doesn't move around while going through my die cutting machine. After everything was a die cut, I went ahead and adhered that card panel that is just slightly smaller than the card base. And I have cat hair all over the place. He kept jumping on my desk as usual. And I'm just using my tape runner to adhere that to the card panel, just leaving a small border on all the edges. I use my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere the thankful word right flat down onto the card panel. And then I will use a strip of Scotch foam tape to pop up the little sentiment strip right underneath that thankful. Last, I took Nouveau Drops in the color Ebony Black and just added a few drops around the flowers underneath the sentiment. I do squeeze a little bit out on a scrap piece of paper and I didn't have any, so I just used the backing from my foam tape just to make sure that there was no air bubbles in there. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.